Want to know how to recognize functional groups in organic compounds? You've come to the right place. This is part 3 of a 3 part series. Hi, I'm Dr. K and welcome to Chem Simplified. In this video, we'll explore all of the functional groups containing carbonyl and carboxyl groups. I've posted a video on the introduction to the 13 functional groups. The link is on the top as well as in the description box below. Do check it out to get more info on how to differentiate each of these groups. A quick recap from that video, OH is called a hydroxyl group, C double bond O is called a carbonyl group, C double bond O with OH bonded together is called a carboxyl group. In this video, we are going to focus on all of the compounds on the right hand side which contains carbonyl and carboxyl. Let's start with aldehyde. It has a carbonyl group and right next to the carbonyl, there must be a hydrogen. This is really critical, otherwise we're going to get a different kind of functional groups. So when identifying aldehyde, what you do is you look for that C double bond O and make sure that right next to that C double bond O, there is one hydrogen. There must be at least one hydrogen. So let's look at the second one, CHO. And the third one, C double bond O, and right next to it is a H. Now let's go back to the second structure, CHO. CHO is actually an abbreviation for C double bond OH. Now don't confuse this with COH, which would represent a hydroxyl group present inside the compound. So CHO represents C double bond O connected to a H. So all these three examples are examples of aldehyde. Next we have ketone. Ketone is very similar to aldehyde except for there is no hydrogen connected to it. So to the left and right of that carbonyl group are carbons. So let's look at the first example. You have our, we have our carbonyl group right there. Left and right, no hydrogen, only carbons. Same thing here in the second structure. C double bond O, left and right, only carbons connected to it. And same thing here as well. C double bond O right in the center there. To the left and to the right of that carbonyl group are carbons. There's no hydrogen or any other compounds connected to it. Then we move on to carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid is kind of like the two that we have seen. Um, it also has carbonyl groups. And what's extra is there's an OH connected to the carbonyl group. So when you have C double bond OOH is no longer a carbonyl group, it is now called a carboxyl group. So our first example is the simplest carboxylic acid you can find, H connected to a carboxyl group. Our second example, HOOC, and our third example, C double bond OOH. So again, let's back up to the second example. Notice sometimes not all the carboxyl groups will be drawn out like our first and our third examples. Sometimes it will be abbreviated or just written in a condensed manner like this. H-O-O-C or you may see it as C-O-O-H. They all mean the same thing. Next we have ester, not to be confused with ether. So ester is like ether except for it has a C double bond O. And ester is also very similar to carboxylic acid. So think carboxylic acid, C double bond O, O, H. One of the H is replaced with a carbon. So we have this. So when you're trying to look for ester, what you do is you look for that C double bond O and right next to it, there must be an oxygen. And right next to that oxygen, there must be a carbon. Let's try that again in the second structure. We have that C double bond O, O, and then carbon. Same thing here. From right to left, C double bond O connected to O, and that O is connected to carbon. So that these three are our examples of ester. Last but not least, we have amide. Don't confuse amide with amine. Amide and amine, they are all nitrogen containing compounds. Amide has an additional carbonyl group. So the functional groups for amide is C double bond O and that carbonyl carbon must be connected to a nitrogen. So it looks like this. Our first example, that is our amide. We have C double bond O and right next to it, 
is a nitrogen. Same thing here, we have C double bond O and next to it, nitrogen. And also same thing here in the third structure, C double bond O, N. Looking at the structure on the left, just like how we can classify amine as primary, secondary, and tertiary, we can do the same thing for amine. So let's look at the first example. Our nitrogen is connected to one carbon, and that one carbon is going to be that carbonyl carbon. So nitrogen connected to one carbon, that's a primary amide. Now our second, our second example in the middle, nitrogen is connected to two carbons. One of the carbon is going to be a carbonyl carbon, and then there's another carbon. So two carbons, secondary. And the third example, nitrogen connected to three carbon, one carbonyl carbon, and then two other carbons. So that's a tertiary amide. Well, that's all on this series. Definitely do check out the other two part of this series if you haven't done so. If you enjoyed this video and find it helpful in showing you how to recognize aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, and amide, share it with your friends or anyone that you think might benefit from it. Do subscribe and click on that bell icon so you'll get notified on new videos. For more info or practice questions, please head over to campsimplified.com. I'll post a blog link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.